This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Match four. Time for the deck that I actually think is the best. Omni Borg Borg Borg. Uh, let's see how this goes. Alright, round four. Yes, I would like to play first. Oh boy, this is uh this is quite the hand that is probably a pretty easy mulligan. Doesn't have a ramp spell. Ugh. This is I guess acceptable but still not good. Now he knows I have that in hand. Yeah, I just... I guess he kept a loose one too. God, I hope I don't brick on the next land. I think I just almost die if I do. Evolve into another land. That's fine. Doesn't actually do anything versus me. Evolve again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's twelve to cast that for blue. It's giving us a lot of time to develop, which is a good thing. Evolve again. Obviously, probably play Nickel Balls and Blow the Land. Because I can Fog to protect it next turn as well. Um, so actually, Enter the Infinite kills him next turn. So I'm going to just do that instead. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He can't kill me next turn, so this is fine. I'll put, uh, I guess I put Bridge of Motion Rage on top of my deck. The most he can deal me is 10 this turn. Oh, 
certainly discard like an increasing ambition or something. When his deck doesn't do anything, it's pretty reasonable to beat him pretty easily. Uh, I want one of my own returns or some, honestly. Detention Sphere seems kind of... I guess you need it versus the Liliana, but it doesn't seem great still. I guess I should leave in one fog. Probably cut one increase ambition. Uh, yeah. Let's see how this goes. I could be wrong, but. He's definitely gonna try to lean on his slaughter games versus me, so just have to be sort of worried about it. might take Chromatic Lantern here, honestly, but uh, it depends a lot on what his hand looks like. Lantern. He might just try to rock just return me for a bunch next turn. Going to play steam vents probably. Steam vents is fine. I think I just rev for one main phase. That can't be right. Return him for two. I'm gonna just rev for one main phase. Could believe that it's wrong though. He's just going to... No, he's going to play something, I guess. Huh. 
Huh. I wonder what he picks here. I'm not really sure what he picks, but I'm going to return him for three on my turn. Assuming he doesn't pick that. He might just pick increasing ambition because he knows I have one in my hand. Time to empty his hand. Three cards. Fortunately, he gets to hit me for a bunch this turn. That puts me to. Does that put me to dead next turn, actually? Exactly dead next turn. I guess I'm gonna rub for three. Oh no, he's one land short, I guess. Still gonna rub for three though. She's still dead here. Play two lands, then proceed to die. Even if... yeah, no. Maybe I'm supposed to leave in more fogs? Alright, now that he's seen my deck, I think I can run the Thragtos Gambit versus him. Um, still want those negates. Still want the sphere. Don't think I actually want the terminus. Maybe I do? this Let's see what happens. Well, I certainly can't keep that one. This one I guess is acceptable. Lead with vents. Yeah, just in case I want to negate on two I guess. Stick. Otherwise, it will actually just crush me. Just close that. It's making me lag. Chromatic Lantern into Evolve next turn. Hopefully, it doesn't games me here for. Well, for anything, really. It's more critical for this deck, I think, to have certain things. I guess that's sort of fine. Shit. Ah, good. Nope. I was supposed to just take two. Mm. 
That's going to be, like, hugely catastrophic. I think I might have just sideboarded poorly. I'm supposed to have like a bunch of sweepers probably versus him. See what we can do here. That's an ideal. I was supposed to really play that overgrown tomb that turn, and then it just cascaded very poorly for me. <coughs> I think, like, these decks are actually, like, more than fine. But you have to know, like, all the insides and outs of them. And I'm not familiar enough with all of them, like, 100% yet. I tried, I actually played uh, a few games with this deck beforehand. It's pretty good versus the Reanimator deck. But I don't think Jund is, like, it's probably a fine matchup. But the way I boarded was probably bad. And that's going to have, like, huge implications since... The deck is basically just all card draw and uh, ramp. So, like, if you have the right sideboard, you're gonna draw the, your side sideboard cards pretty often, which will swing the matchup like very differently. So, yeah, I think Bant and Esper are like more than fine choices still. The way those decks are built. They're, they have a reasonable plan versus Reanimator, although, like, I don't think it's a great plan. Like, they're basically just relying on losing game one and then trying to win the next two games, even if you're at, like, a 70% uh, game win in post board games. You're still only, like, 49% to win the match or so, which is not very good, considering, like, every game one you're just dead. I think what this also proves is that uh, Reed's deck is a really good choice still. If you don't like these sort of uh, rogue, blue green esque decks that attack from a different angle, I still think this deck is sort of powerful. It certainly like has the capability to get catch people by surprise, um, but I'm going to test a bit more with it and see if it actually is good or not. 
But yeah, this deck seems pretty fun if that's up your alley for like Friday Night Magics or whatever. And most people are not going to know what's going on here, though. I think this probably caught Reed by surprise. You don't see these cards in every single deck list. Whereas, like, the Esper and Bant matchups, he had a better idea. Fog matchup, it's not good for the Fog player, I believe. Especially since, like, I don't think Fogs are that good versus Jun, since, like, they can just clear you out with Rakdos' return, or just burn you out, or uh, kill all of your lands with Goliana, essentially. So, apparently in the Esper versus Jun match, Reed meant to give me Drown Yard in one other land versus everything else, which makes a lot of sense, because the only way I was really winning that game was with the Drown Yard, so I'd probably have to take that pile and just hope to draw two lands in a row, since I already had, or draw one land, since I already had a land in my hand. But that still gives them much better odds to win that game. Whereas in the very last game, I definitely played the wrong land, I was supposed to play Overgrown Tomb to cast Evolution on that turn. Uh, the game would have been, like, completely different. It's hard to tell what would have actually happened. But yeah, ironically, these are mistakes that we would basically never make in real life, since the Liliana bug apparently got him. Sometimes it, like, shows you a different pile than what you actually mean to give them, and, like, I think that just messed him up. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed watching some decks that are kind of under the radar. And uh, I think they're pretty fun to play, and people might not necessarily know how to play them against 100%, so they're probably reasonably good choices for any tournaments you guys might have. Hope you enjoyed these set of videos. Thanks.